Hi, uh, the purpose of this video is to show you how Amaris Stitchers works uh, with a particular focus, though not exclusive focus, on images taken with the Ultra Microscope 2. So the first thing you need to do um, if you want to stitch images using Amaris Stitcher is to convert whatever file format you have to the Amaris file format. Uh, in particular, uh, for the light sheet acquired on the Ultra Microscope 2, it's very important to make uh, to do that conversion with the latest version of Amaris File Stitcher, which is of uh, July 2020, is File Stitcher 9.5.1. Uh, excuse me, File Converter 9.5.1. So let me open File Converter up. Um, the way you convert files is simply by dragging the folder that contains them over. And so I'm going to uh, convert these ones. Uh, if you look in here, uh, you will see there are 1,296 items. Uh, these are files that came from ZStacks in a single channel on the light sheet in a configuration where we did tiling over um, two columns and uh, three rows. So the easiest way to convert all that is to just grab the folder which has all the tiling and drag it over. Um, it's a good idea to point where you want to convert to to a folder that makes sense. So uh, I have a folder called sample2 high res converted 951 just because I want to contrast what happens when you convert it with another version of the converter. So here's where I'm going to point this. And so those 1296 files will get uh, changed into six MRS files, uh, one for each position. So all the Zs get collapsed and now we have uh, just six MRS files which you can see uh, have, you know, all have the same channel, all have the same Z because that's been collapsed into just the name of the first one. But then they differ on this. And uh, these, and this nomenclature here indicates the Y and the X. So the number of rows and the number of columns. Okay, and that's just something, the, the reason it, it's, I mean, why it's the Y first and then the X, I don't know, but that's how LaVision does it. Uh, if you have other software, you know, that, that, that generated the images, this may come out uh, completely differently. But whatever you start with, you need to convert to Amaris before you can use the stitcher. And it's highly recommended that you use the latest version of both the converter and the stitcher. So conversion is done. Let's open stitcher. To add the images that you want, you can either select them all and drag them in or click on add images and navigate to uh, this folder. So I'm just going to drag them in. If your images had metadata, uh, they will be positioned according to whatever the metadata uh, indicates. Uh, if they don't, they'll typically be piled on top of each other. I'll show you an example of that uh, later. So uh, what can we do here? Uh, as far as visualization goes, the controls are exactly the same as in Amaris. So all of this is just like the display adjustment in Amaris. I like and personally to convert it to a grayscale. I like to have advanced on so I can tweak these numbers. But this is a pretty reasonable um, representation currently. Uh, you can also, uh, just like in Amaris, use the scroll wheel to zoom in, right click to move around, click fit to fit it to the window. And in this case, you can grab things with, by left clicking and reposition them. So if the positioning that the software uh, gave to Amaris is not quite perfect, you can manipulate things by hand. If you don't have any positioning, uh, you can manipulate things by hand. Uh, or if you just if you didn't do this even with an automated stage, you may need to uh, move things around by hand to get them to match. So. Uh, if you know you make adjustments and then you, you sort of uh, regret what you did, you can click on reset images to original positions and you'll go back to wherever you were uh, when when you drag the files into Mars. The other thing that you can do, which is sometimes useful when trying to figure out if things are properly positioned, is you can use the 3D view, uh, which is what we're on right now. It's just a maximum intensity projection. And so that's useful because if there are things in multiple planes, you can sort of see them all. But you can also use the slice view where you have something like this, where you can more easily trace particular features that go between different uh, 
tiles in the entire mosaic. All right, I'm going to go back to 3D view. I'm going to go back to fit. OK, so how do we assess the quality of uh, the alignment of the images? So if we zoom in, what we want to look at as, is at the edges and see if there's any doubling. So I'm zooming in, and you can see there's some clear doubling here. So uh, that means that I might need to adjust these slightly to improve that. And you can see that looks a little bit better. And then if I look down here, I can also see some clear doubling. So I would need to raise this one and also raise that one. Now this can get a little bit tricky to do by hand. Um, so you can use, as I showed you before, the slicer view to help you in this endeavor to see if um, you're more or less aligning things properly. And if there are some clear features that, you know, that can help you do that, something like this, for example. Um, or you can do it with this 3D view, uh, which in this case, um, in this particular data set is quite useful because there are a lot of layers of filaments all over the place, and filaments are actually something really useful uh, to align with. So, so this is one option. You can sort of do it by hand. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to do in this first option. So let's say you like this arrangement. OK, so how do you uh, tell Imaris to save a file with these settings? So you click here. When you click there, what it does is it will save one Imaris file with all of this stitch. So I'm going to call this sample2 stitched by hand. So that is going to save an Imaris file with this particular stitching. So now let's say that before I, 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 I commit to this, I want to try other options for, for, for stitching and see how they look. So maybe what I want to do is not save the image, but save the arrangement of the tiles that I uh, accomplished by hand, um, and then try different arrangements of the tiles and see which ones I like best. So I'm going to save. To do that, I'm going to have to save the project. Uh, and I will call it, let's see if I can get to my folder here that I'm using. I'll call it aligned by hand. OK. And so now we have this arrangement. So if I reset images to the original positions, it sort of undid what I had. But I, I can go back to it by saying open project, aligned by hand. And now I have that arrangement, sort of those slight shifts that I put in by hand. So if you're trying to sort of trying different things, uh, to sort of see how they, they, they perform, to have a workflow, you can save the different arrangements. So for example, the one by hand looked pretty good. The, uh, the default position doesn't, so I'm going to just save it So just for reference. Um, we can, since the default didn't work very well, what we can do is instead of aligning them by hand, we can use the actual alignment tool in Imaris clicking this, and it now the software will try and align it, and we can see whether it does a good job or not. And so you can see here that it did something very similar to what I did by hand. So in this case, it performed quite well. Now, sometimes what happens is um, even if you manage to align things, you'll see that the alignment is not perfect around the edges, so it's like maybe this part is OK, but if you go to the corners, there are misalignments. And so that may be an indication, for example, for light sheet data, uh, that you are having imperfections due to imperfections in the optics of the system. And if you're in a situation like that, you might need to crop the images, the original images more to be able to uh, stitch them all seamlessly. So uh, what if you are, so, so that that's kind of the workflow. You, you, you set some things up so that you can see them. Uh, you try and uh, manipulate them either by hand or by aligning all images. You can save the projects if you want to save different alignment options. Uh, but what if you're in a situation where when you load the data, um, it doesn't have metadata, so it doesn't position it properly? What do you do then? So what you do then is the following. Let's remove everything here. And I'll show you an example of this, which is just the same data set, but I converted it with an older version of the file converter in Amaris. 
And that older version didn't read the metadata properly, so it's as if we didn't have any metadata. So if I show the image borders, which is this here, you'll see that you know this looks like just a pile of everything together. I see only one image, so where are the rest? You can see they're sort of all piled up together. So if you're in a situation like that, um, it's a good idea to go to position images on grid. So here what you can do uh, is sort the images by name, if they're organized in a way that that will help you position them, or go here and try to um, input the parameters such that they're organized properly. So for example, we know in the light sheet data that this first number here in the brackets is the Y position, meaning the number of rows. Uh, and then this number uh, here is the number of columns or the X position. So there are three Ys and two Xs. So if I do, uh, that's starting to look a little bit better. Uh, I know that that system acquires images row by row, so sort of like this, and that the orientation is right and up. And I know that I used an overlap of 10%. So now we're sort of getting somewhere. And you may have to play around with this because it may not be obvious to you like how these things map to um, uh, the, the Amara Stitcher. But if you just play around with them at, at some point, if you, if you know the X and the Y, you're going to get the configuration that you had. And then you can just say, OK, go back here and do uh, the same stuff that we did before. You can also, uh, if you if you did sort of freeform acquisition where you didn't have a motorized stage, uh, but you did that in, in roughly some sort of pattern, you can use this to kind of get you close and then make the final adjustments uh, by hand. And so again, you know, once we're here, we can either manipulate all of them by hand or say align all images um, to let them sort of optimize freely in the software, that seems to have done the trick. And then we can save the Amaris file. And if we are testing different alignment options, um, we can say, save project, and then um, sort of try another alignment, save that one, and then compare them um, more rigorously later. You can also, um, by shift clicking, just align a few of the images. Maybe these need particular work. Um, and so, yeah, that's also an option within the software. There's not much, much. There's not that much more to this. Um, show image borders just shows the the borders of the individual images. And in preferences, um, you can input a bunch of stuff on the memory, the texture cache limit, uh, and then there's there's some options to do uh, different kinds of resampling, which uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't really go in here and, and adjust this. So um, let's just say okay. Um, that's pretty much it for MR Stitcher. It's a simple software to use. It works reasonably well. If you have any questions, as usual, uh, just let me know. I hope that was useful.